Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today with a local author. His name is Michael Kaiser, and he has just had a novel published. And of course, as anyone knows, writing any kind of a published work is a chore in itself, which you have to have a lot of information, as well as a lot of ability to put words together that make some kind of sense. And here we have a Michael Kaiser. Mr. Kaiser, let us look today at the introduction of uh, the book itself and how you uh, arranged to write this particular okay. book. Okay. It is named what? Tales of the Circle P. Okay. Circle P being a ranch uh, and also a brand. Um, what happened is a number of years ago I decided I wanted to delve into uh, the family history. The fa your family my history? My family history, the okay. Kaiser family history. And mm -hmm. I had a great deal of material, um, a lot of photographs. And if you're ever writing something, as you know, it helps to have photographs because then you can describe, you know, what the, what the individual was doing. So I wrote a, uh, a memoir of my grandfather and my grandmother uh, the way I knew them. And I was the eldest uh, grandson or the eldest grandchild, so I knew them fairly well. And I wrote about them. And I finished it. And it, it looked good, okay? It looked pretty good, pretty good shape. But then I said, as Peggy Lee remarked back in the early 50s, is that all there is? And that, that is true. So then I stepped out of uh, reporting or uh, reasonably uh, accurate writing and started into a novel. And the novel is about the same country, but obviously it has, it's fictional. Um, there was a family ranch called the Diamond K. Okay, now the same country meaning the western part of the United States, basically? Yeah, meaning in specifically southeastern Idaho along the Snake River. Okay. okay. The family had a ranch there. It was my grandfather's ranch. And how large was that ranch? A uh, thousand or sixteen hundred acres. Sixteen hundred acres. Um, and one, one on both sides of the road, or a ranch on two sides, and then one abutting the Snake River. And he raised? Cattle. Cattle. Well, okay. wheat and cattle. Wheat and so, cattle, okay. So along about 1950 one or 52, when I was visiting there every summer, um, the federal government came along, the Corps of Army Engineers, and they said, this is a great place to build a dam, and the dam will back water up about 12 to 14 miles, and that water will be somewhere between 100 and 300 feet deep, and your ranch is in the way. So 65 families were displaced, all ranchers in, the, in this section called the Snake River Valley. Including the entire ranch of your yes, grandfather. Yes, correct. Well, not a, not 100 percent. The okay. shoreline was about, still left maybe 100 acres going north up to the Targhee Forest, okay? So I have to tell this story because it's raining, winding forward. Um, uh, so the ranch was covered. There went a way of life. There went what I thought for me would have been a, a satisfactory way of living. I, I loved it. Uh, very hard work all the time, some hard play, but mostly hard work, and a great deal of accomplishment in getting things done. Okay, so the ranch was sold, um, and the way they sold it, the federal government actually bought it at about three times what it was worth, and nobody's going to turn that down. So there wasn't any argument about eminent domain. It just didn't exist. Nobody wanted to fight it. I mean, if, you know, you can appreciate that. Uh, two years ago, I went out west to uh, presumably go to Yellowstone, but primarily to go to uh, uh, the Grand Tetons. I don't know whether this shows or not but th there'll be a larger uh, picture of it. Now, that is the cover of the book? Both books. Okay, cover okay. the both books, and it yeah. is from an actual picture? Yeah, it's from a that painting. That you have. Yeah, I have, no, well, my daughter has a painting. I have the photograph. It was a picture that my grandfather had commissioned when he came back from the war, World War I, um, and it's his favorite spot, mine too. This is, again, Jenny Lake down here. And this is the Tetons in back of it. And there's a lodge over here called the Jenny Lake Lodge. And that's where the family took their vacation for 20, 25 years. My grandparents started that. Anyhow, to make a long story short. Um, now the lodge is still there? Yes, it's still there. And, okay. doing, and doing a good business. And, and this is, uh, you're, you're permitted to fish in here if you use electric motors. Nothing, nothing, nothing that would cause a weight. Okay. So went out to Yellowstone. Stayed in Idaho. And, and what year was that? Uh, two years ago, which would have been okay. 200 or 2008, but it may have been 2007. Okay. Okay. Wanted to go see the ranch. 
uh, knew approximately where it was, drove out to the ranch site, and uh, it was out of water, completely out of water. The Snake River, off in the distance, was seen flowing. All the lake was gone. They had drained it, probably for ir either irrigation purposes or water purposes. It was still producing electricity because the water was, you know, down sufficient to do that. It was an incredible experience. This was 60 years of a place I grew up. All the buildings were there, the house, w which was a stone foundation, the barn, the tack house, the well house, and the granary, which was a bachelor shack, that's where I stayed. Uh, they were all there. The, I mean, the buildings were gone Occupied by the foundations. No, or no, owned no, by the oh, government. No, nothing there. Just lake bottom. Okay. Okay. Now, you can appreciate this. Um, uh, I'm in the, uh, in the uh, granary, which was our bachelor shack, we called it. And uh, every, there were some things on the, on the floor. There was a, uh, the pot lifter, or the iron lifter off a wood stove. That was down there, 60 years underwater. But the most amazing thing were the frames of the beds we used to sleep on. Now, wait a minute. Those were all underwater. At one time, they were underwater. They're steel. There was nothing wrong with them. They're the, like the steel the day they were bought. They were sitting out in back of the uh, granary. They must not have hauled them away because they didn't float. When they build a dam, they want everything you know, tied down that doesn't float up. The creeks that crossed the, the um, ranch were all filled in. Maybe they were worried about caving or something like that. It's all volcanic rock. The creek where was some of the best trout fishing in Idaho, certainly, was gulched out. There was, you know, there was just a big gulch, no water running in it. And this is after the, you know, the lake bottom was gone. That was an experience. That's in the book. Um, it, was a, uh, it was more than a sentimental journey. It was an absolute shock. I mean, you can believe when you go back and take a look at something that is 60 years old and you'd said goodbye to it, and there was a lake over the top of it, all of a sudden to discover that it's there. So Now, is there a character in the book representative of you? Well, presumably, but probably not. Now, as soon as, you know this, as soon as you start to write something, you write a page and you're trying to be reasonably accurate and you're trying to, quote, get the truth, as soon as you get to that second paragraph, you're into fiction. And uh, that's true. The one thing about the book that is accurate, this, this uh, experience was... Uh, described um, with different characters, obviously. Uh, the one thing that's accurate about the book is all the places where this family goes for quick vacations or long vacations. I've been to all those places, so I can describe them accurately out of my memory. Uh, but the Circle P doesn't exist. I mean, you know, we've, we, build a, we build a novel here. But it was based upon a real ranch. Correct. Basically. Yes, correct. So and a much real of this is yeah. fiction, but it's al also uh, nonfiction from your life experiences. Some of my life and remembrances. Correct, correct, and and that's a good way of putting it. There's always a trigger to get you into into uh, fiction, and there's a usually a germ that starts the whole process, and then you you become uh, uh, then you then you take off into the land of uh, of the imagination. And, so you uh, uh, actually began this after you had been at that site. No. No, before that. Long before. Okay. I hadn't, I was looking for, <laughs> this is another thing that we could talk about. I was looking for a way to end the book. Okay. Okay. I have this family, uh, the Lamberts, and uh, they're into the second generation. And rather than have them die, I have to be honest, rather than have them die natural deaths, I just decided to leave them in their 50s, okay, when life is still good. <laughs> before... <laughs> before, all the thing, before all the things that bother us, you know. Life's good at 50? Life's, well, it's better, it's better <laughs> than the older. <laughs> yeah. As, uh, who said that? Uh, Marie Chevalier, upon the occasion of his 80th birthday, said, uh, he beats the alternative. <laughs> so, um, so I was looking for a way to end it. And I kind of had an ending.